I'm Julian Silverberg from Newton. I like Karen. Uh, a couple of, couple of modalities here. Well, I want to thank the people that organized this thing. Number two, I want to thank the operating engineers for letting us in here. I think that is just tremendous for them. I want to tell us and thank them, and he was uh, very interested in this thing and the chief has got the bill. A couple other things. Of course, the racing. Many of the sports car races here, not all of them, were run by the Detroit Valley region of sports car program. We've got three charter members of DMVR. We, we actually started this region in uh, 1957. And we've got the first and second regional executive. Dean Elder. Dean! Raise your hand. And Ralph Fields. And I don't know which was first and which was second. <laughs> We were a small region, maybe 50 or 60 members, and we had the North put on the race. Well, we had a lot of help from some of the other regions. Uh, Karen and I, our role was running the timing crew. We worked in conjunction with Mike and Pat Buck of Ames, Iowa. They later moved away, and then later on we worked with a guy named Dick Sexton. The way this thing went, especially in the first couple of years, we call our co-workers, friends, neighbors, whoever we could get. We got a crew of 50 or 60 people. Right. And we ran it. This was, of course, before transponders and computers, before digital stopwatches that would give you every lap. And we ran it from Hoyer to watch people, some big stopwatches with stop action heads. So we get this crew of people, maybe 30 of them, up in the timing stand, which is, was up just beyond the start of the finish line. We get 20 or 30 people with the stopwatches, and uh, we'd have a pair of people, one person with the stopwatch, another person to write numbers down and do the arithmetic. Because the way the timing worked was as soon as the starter dropped his flag to start a race, everybody started to walk. And that was official race time. So then when we assigned car numbers to various pairs of people, whenever their car came past, they'd stop the stop hand, greet the minutes and seconds, and then do some subtraction to get the lap time. <clears throat> so we did, especially in practice, we did have to get lap time because that, that uh, qualified them for their starting position. Uh, we also, at the start of the race, when the green flag dropped, we also started a couple of spare watches because inevitably somebody didn't get their watch started. So. And later on, the reason we had 50 or 60 people is because we thought the people that were working would want to have time off to watch the race or go get something to eat or go to the bathroom or whatever. We found out that people wouldn't leave. If they had a watch and some cars to judge, they wouldn't leave. So uh, we eventually saw that cut that block down quite a bit. The uh, timing stand was just behind the start finish line. And the first few laps especially when the Cars came up over the hill. If you remember, there's a hill coming up to the start finish line. It was a real scramble to find your car and, and get the time. But we did uh, we did have a good time. We had a loyal bunch of people that wanted to work. And they were not members of SCA, they were just friends. What about this? Nothing. <laughs> uh, other than those were the days when you did all your calculating <laughs> with your brain. Yeah, yeah. There and you stop and think, if you're timing two or three cars, then you have to do the arithmetic minutes and seconds. It's not like decimal. It's a lot harder minutes and seconds. We managed. Uh, we never Oh, The first few races, the track announcer was Jim Zoller. He really didn't know an awful lot about it. 
that kind of race. <laughs> and, and so uh, we would help them once in a while. If somebody turned in a hot lap, we hand them a slip and say, so and so card number such and such, turned in a you know, hot lap. Put that over the period. Mm -hmm. uh, later then, they got 20 grand Steinbach. Does anybody remember 20 grand Steinbach? Well, he was, of course. Uh, he was out of Chicago, and he was a professional racing officer, and he was good. And he would wear a pair of earphones so that he could hear all the corner workers around the course. And he'd be talking away and calling the race, and if something happened out there, he'd hear it. He'd keep on talking, but he'd hear what was going on, and he'd put it out over the PA system. He would just do it. What else? That was fun. It was fun to be part of it. And, uh, good memories. I was I was not a good record keeper. I kept some records, but I should have kept a lot more. Uh, fast lap. The fast lap that I can remember seeing was by Charlie Cox, and I think he was in an album, a minute and 56 seconds. Or was it, this is a three mile course that's, that's pretty fast. I think that was Cooper. Oh, Cooper. Okay. Cooper or what age? Cooper Monaco with uh, like one of the King Cobras. Oh, okay. This had a Chevy engine on, didn't it? Not that one. Not really? The blue Ford? Yeah. But uh, of course, depending on the class of the, of the car, it went from minutes 56 on up to two minutes on. Those were fun days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do have some folks from Alabama. I don't know if they've been introduced. Pam and Al Horn, there's Al. They have a car that was raised here in September of 1960. And went off the track. And, so. <laughs> okay, that, I think that's all I've got, unless there's some questions. Oh, one other thing. <laughs> These are really neat watches. They all had numbers on them. Well, but one of the races, one of the watches disappeared. Where it went. I have a hunch. I don't know who, but I have a hunch somebody slipped it in the pocket. So Monday morning, I got on the phone and I called Hoyer and said, we're sending the watches back, but one of them is missing. And I talked to him. Oh, what number was it? Who said it was his own child and it was a missing thing. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of guys. Pardon? When it cost to replace it. I don't remember the insurance dollar didn't call it. They were not talking. We have to get over to the speedway here for the next